All right, this video is fucking crazy. I went into this with little knowledge about the SOK because I never really paid attention to the videos before. And I knew they were a group of people who got together to make fun of DSP, but I guess there was this certain vibe they had that threw me off and not made me want to watch their videos. And as you know, I myself have a documentary series on DSP and I have heard some mentions of the SOK in one of my comment sections and it piqued my interest. And so I wanted to do more research about how the downfall of SOK came about. And all of the information I gathered is kind of overwhelming. There was a lot to dig through. And like I said, I'm pretty new on how all of this shit went down. So bear with me if I get some details wrong. But I'll do my best. So with that being said, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you can get notified when more videos come out. Now it's time to take a look into the downfall of the SOK. Hideo Kojima got enough billing? Yeah, I think maybe they should say his name a couple more times. Kojima, 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 Kojima. Metal Gear Kojima. Sons of Kojima, 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 Kojima. During DSP's Metal Gear Solid 2 playthrough, he did a bunch of weird Kojima bashing at the start for absolutely no reason at all. And this isn't nothing different. DSP is known to bash on Kojima a lot playing through his games. Hey look, already a cutscene. All I do is take two steps. Oh, Hideo Kojima. His name will show up in the credits 400 times, don't worry. Punch the button. I can't. No button of mine punches the button. Nothing punches it. Fuck this stupid shit. Seriously, man. Kojima's a fucking asshole. Punch the switch. How do you punch the fucking switch? I'm so tired of this shit. Kojima's a fucking cocksucker. If I ever find him, I'm gonna kick him straight in his fucking balls. But during that playthrough, he unknowingly birthed the name of the most infamous detractor group in YouTube's history. So it is the SOK. <laughs> well, obviously, there were a group of people who didn't like DSP and formed a podcast where they would just shit on him for hours. Along with their regular podcast, they would do listeners of This Is How You Don't Plays and other fear related content. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, too. This Let's Endure of Sonic Adventure, we have a wonderful panel of idiotic motherfuckers. Jeez. First off, we have the original Fazzy. Fazzy. Hi, I do indeed exist. We have the Detroit Fazzy, Torres. What up, people? We have the Rad Rad. Oh, yeah, this is happening. And we have the Freddy Boy. Um, play. Oh no! Oh no! He sounds pretty ill. What a great fight! He's oh, mentally no. ill. Oh, how dare you! Yeah, we're the mentally ill ones, that's, apparently. That's correct. I can't hit him. He's glitched. He's, he's glitched. Cl he's, he's underwater. He's glitched. He's glitched. <laughs> oh, <laughs> look how he flies the goddamn plane, dude. What the fuck kind of bullshit is this? <laughs> Why is it going everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> All right. My batteries must be running out, because look. Okay, the then fucking. I actually have batteries right in my bedroom. Let me go swap these. Oh out my god, you couldn't just bring them? And the whole thing was operated by their leader, Fred Fox. Wait, who's this? Fred Fox? Fred Fox? Fred Fox? Fred Fox! Oh my god, Fred Fox! Oh my god, it's Fred Fox! Oh, oh, oh Fred Fox! And now we get to the question of who is Fred Fox? Well, Fred is a very terrible person. He's a self-proclaimed MMA expert, but he's only ever done three legit days of practice. He's someone who takes what he does on the internet way too seriously. In some regards, he was even worse than Fred when all the shit got leaked out on Twitter. We got to see how much of a bitch he truly was behind the scenes, cause some of the shit he had planned out was just fucking insane. He was also a petty son of a bitch if you don't follow them. Look at this conversation he had with a former member of the SOK after he left them and unfollowed them on Twitter. Hey buddy, thanks for following, smiley face. I was following 421 people and needed to cut someone. LOL, and you unfriended me? If you're gonna make a big deal about numbers. What? I said thank you. I like to follow 420 people. Sure. Uh, what is your deal? You leave the group, 
you unfollow me randomly and then you unfriend me because you went out of your way to message me over and unfollow on Twitter. I joked around with you about it and said thanks. Well, we don't really talk anyway, so what's it matter? Why are you being so hostile? I never did anything to you. In fact, I've been nothing but nice to you. And I'm not claiming you did. I don't know why you're making a big deal over this. I'm not. I literally made a joke about it. You unfriended me over it and have been kind of a dick so far. Okay, sorry. Wasn't trying to be a dick. So what's up? I don't know. Alright. Well, just wanted to make a joke with you and see how you were doing. To be honest, I kind of feel like you might have had some sort of issue with me or the group and weren't honest about it based on our interaction now. No, your joke just felt like you being a dick. I don't know. Random unfollows seemed like being a dick. I took it in scribe and made a joke about it. Didn't seem like it. Funny how the only time you even think to talk to me is when I leave the group and then unfollow you. Otherwise, I don't hear one word from you. That comes across as not really caring outside of that. And that's just an example of how much of a passive aggressive bitch he can be to people. If you were a part of their community and for whatever reason you decide to leave, Fred would do everything in his power to find out anything he can about you and your personal information. Another thing about Fred is that he is a very shallow person. Without the topic of shitting on DSP, he literally has nothing to talk about. You can even see this for yourself when he had Mr. Metacron as a guest for their podcast. He showed that he truly couldn't handle the simple banner and completely falls apart when he's faced with a tough question. Yeah, so let's 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 fucking do that. Uh let's see. Okay, hold on. No, they're they're typing too fast here. Alright, let me get this shit set up. So we're Ask gonna... Fred if he's a kike. Fred, are you a kike? No, I actually I don't have any uh any Jewish heritage in me. See, that's just what a yid would say. Don't listen to him. He's totally fucking Jewish. <laughs> He's totally yeah, fucking Jewish. You got me. This. You got me. Uh, okay, why is Fred obsessed with talking about another man's penis? Fred, why why are you so focused on another man's penis? No, this is the same thing Sammy said. This is not correct. I am not obsessed about talking about another man's penis. I don't even talk about my own penis that much on this show. So, no, this is not correct. Um... Yeah, that's all I can say. This is this, this is an unsubstantiated claim, Jim. I swear, this is not. How how long did you and Sammy talk about penises? Uh, well, I <laughs> I told him that he gets a, an erection anytime Phil uploads a new video. Um, so I think that took about fifteen seconds. Um, and then obviously the 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 original claim um, that I was talking about penis for like ten minutes or something. So, so I don't you know, talk, maybe so about you forty-five. Talk to, you talk to another dude about dicks for a straight what 12 15 minutes no 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 i'd say about 45 seconds 45 seconds of talking about cocks it's completely no homo it's completely no homo there you go chat uh why fred why do you like food nari is uh, a question that i want to ask okay <laughs> now this is also see what what is this bullshit you see what we got to deal with now for me so <laughs> the, the the real dark side phil i'm guessing is sammy because this sounds like everything he brought up S O K specifically Freddy. I want to find out the root of your issues. Why do you hate Phil? Why do you spend over 500 hours hating him? You need help. You even talked about his penis for over 10 minutes. This is a this is incorrect. This is <laughs> I mean, okay, okay, okay. There, there's your answer. This is incorrect. Phil isn't changing from anything being said on them, and neither are his airheaded fans going to stop pledging their money to him. What's there to even talk about at this point? Phil says stupid shit about something he knows jack shit about. Phil gets criticized and responds by blocking them and then writing another wall of text. Phil whines about a video game not letting him win easily. At what point does it become obvious that this is just the same old boring crap from him? Well, that's up to you, right? If you you, you almost speak as though you're speaking for like the people as though these are like a whole bunch of things that everyone believes. If you personally believe that the show is boring and that you don't like it anymore, and that's fine. What does that have to do with your Twitter? Like, if you're trying to first, you were trying to. I, I guess you were trying to make the the argument that like the Twitter uh, or that the, the the show is like damaging or something like that. But now you're just saying that the show is boring. Okay, cool. That's that's completely up to you. Fred was also a fucking asshole when it came to criticism. No man on earth is above the next person. Anyone could be criticized. 
it's how you choose to handle the criticism you receive. Because if you do it poorly, well then you just look like a dumbass. Fred wasn't able to handle criticism in a mature way. In fact, it was the total opposite. It was fair game to shit talk anybody else. In fact, you'll get to see more of that during this video. But the moment it was dished back towards him, he turned into a fucking child. Take this situation when he discovered that someone made an encyclopedia dramatica page about him and his group. That dude went on a whole witch hunt to find a nigga who did it. Oh, hey, Mustafa. Um, so, if you could, you know, in the, anti, uh, the no drama, anti S O K J, just, uh, well, I'm busy making the page. Could you tell everyone if they do decide to add to it, just uh, use an inconspicuous name that can't be traced back to any of us, you know, because fucking de doxing us and shit, you know, nobody wants that. I, I so guess. Is, how do you feel about this? Yeah, I'm going to be the one that creates it. No, but, but do you mean. I think I have a new IP address. What the fuck? <laughs> and he was able to track him down. So him and one of his bitch boys got this dude in a call and basically gave him a lecture and whined about being made fun of on a website that's made them make fun of everybody. I, um, I can't, uh, my intentions weren't the first time, they weren't sincere, but like... No, three, when, time, uh, three like, times they weren't sincere. Um, wait, when was the third time? Today. Uh, this fucking guy. I don't know, what but like problem, in the... Boone? I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you? You, you don't answer discussion. a great question. He's asking you why you're doing this. You're, oh, for the lulls, uh, you know, I don't recall. Dude, be a man, grow a fucking pair of balls, and just say why you did it. Because for the lulls, like I said. Dude, what are you fucking like there, dude, there, You are 12. There is no other reason. You are a fucking 12-year-old. I did it for I, the lulls. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? Dude, there's people older than that to do it for the lols. It's uh, not like yeah, and they're immature as hell. Like fucking it, holy hell, that act like they're twelve. Are you kidding me? It's not like it's immature wholesaling. Yes, it know? is. It's an Encyclopedia Dramatica calling people niggers and faggots. Yeah, it's immature. And, but, and on top of that, you somebody who says I'm going to stop part. talking about them and then does it, it's immature. It, it, I removed Moogle's part because that was immature. I agree oh, with you. One but, person. Oh, okay, you removed one person. All's forgiven. We we couldn't we couldn't blank out the whole fucking page, and I didn't know how to edit it. So yeah, you could have. You could have said, you know what? I'm not getting involved in this. Why are you guys doing it? Um. Well, like, why did you have to be the one to post it? I don't know. I don't know. I gotta interrupt for a second, but how is Moogle's part immature, but Renegade's part wasn't? Well, I didn't. I didn't even. Yeah, the rough draft. I didn't even know new members are. Well, I knew today, yeah, but I, know, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Just, just, I don't just know to who clarify, did it. Just, I, yeah. Just because I post something that you know isn't even true in the fucking first place, it doesn't mean like it doesn't I, matter if it's true or not. I don't give a shit. It's the fact that you did it. It's your action, not your reasoning. Do you get what I'm trying to say? It's called logic. Yeah. Bitch. Yeah, yeah, I get you. So how about this? I'll go fuck your mother for the laws and everything will be cool, right? No hard feelings? I guess. Yeah, if you want to, like, twist... The, twist the laws. If you just want to twist my logic into black and white there, sure. No, I mean, that's what you're saying. You're saying you could do something if it's just for the laws. Nobody's supposed to get mad or offended. It's, that, that, it's just that, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you shouldn't take a fucking encyclopedia page Dramatica seriously. Oh, okay. I, I have to ask, because now I see Ed Page has been timed out, and they were talking about something, and it's uncomfortable, so it's great fucking conversation. What is the harassment call they're talking about? I don't know what the harassment call is. I think... Let me look why, at do, why do I feel like I'm missing out on half the shit you guys do? Was there... Did you guys... Did somebody call you up? What happened? No, I don't know. I don't know what this is. Like, harassment call? I, I don't know. Like I said, it's your, it's, you're going to have to fill me out on the backstory here. No let, idea me look what that at, is. let me look at the mod history because if he posted a link, he probably got timed out by Meowbot for that. Um, let me see. Yeah, Ed Page didn't do nothing, okay? He's a didn't do player. nothing. Didn't do nothing. Just uh, like Hitler. Uh, somebody saying harassment call with DSP alert? Is any of this shit ringing a bell? Because I, 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 honest to God, don't know. I don't know about any harassment calls. Um, no, I mean, we've argued... I mean, like, our arguments... 
Um, we okay, broadcast okay. Here's them online. Here's what here's what Ed is saying, or Ed is uh, Page is saying. Whoever made the ED page uh, harassed Fred. That's what he claimed in the call. Harassed. So were, you, were, were you in were you in a call and claimed that you got harassed by the guy that made the ED page? Or uh, Ed Page, are you saying the guy who made the ED page is claiming he called Fred and harassed him? I guess that's what I'm lost on. I'm just trying to catch up with what he's talking about. Yeah, I'm lost too. Um, oh, oh, here we go. Fred and Carl snapped on Boondocks for making an Ed page. Do you guys know who Boondocks is? Boondocks is someone that posted uh, the ED page, and we were like, why did you do that? Because somebody wrote it to him, or somebody wrote it, gave it to him and his group of friends because they were too scared to post it themselves. Uh, so he posted it. And we were like, why did you do that? And he just said a bunch of stupid stuff. Like, we didn't harass him. We just asked him why he did it. Um, yeah, we just thought it was dumb. Okay, well, there you go, man. You got your answer. See, that was nice. That was that was straightforward and simple. Not, not an issue. I um, didn't know this was a harassment call. I, I, I don't know. I want to hear like the, that. Are they saying the, we I'll harassed just... him? Okay, let's see. Uh, they're saying this is their follow-up. Sons of Kojima leaked harassment. Type it in on YouTube to see Fred claim harassment. They're calling you out, man. Damn. Fred got somebody, somebody with the name E.D. Page is, uh, damn, he's, he's got our goat, I guess. You got a sysop in the uh, in the chat. Screamed for four minutes. Did you freak out on somebody that called you? No, no, seriously. We just said this is our take on it. And I found out just recently, uh, before I posted this comment, that he had used something of mine, clearly, um, because the screen cap was mine. It was my screen cap. I took it. I paste, I put it on my Twitter and it was yanked, used. Uh, the uncredited part is just really just the kick in the pants. I, that's not the point that it was uncredited or stolen. What I wanted to say to him politely is please don't use, don't use my content in your monetized stuff. That's what I don't want. I don't want to be part of this. You, there's all sorts of comments for you to grab. There's all sorts of tweets for you to grab. There's a whole world out there. Please don't use my stuff. Not fucking don't use my fucking stuff. I'm going to take it down. Nothing else like that. Please don't use my stuff for monetized stuff. I've posted the evidence. You can watch the video. You can look at the screen caps. You can look at anything that you would like to show that we literally had nothing to do with this other than the fact that we spoke out about the fact that he makes money off of Phil. And I feel as though we have every right to say that. We never told anybody to boycott him. I've seen people do hashtag unsub Ardenos, all this shit. We've never said anything to anybody to say that they should do anything. The only thing that we did is voice the fact that we don't like it, and then we tried to offer up an alternative. An ad-free, glory-free, credit-free, anonymous group of people that are going to put together a channel that archives Phil stuff without ads. And that was taken down. Who has a stake to take that down? Ardenas. Who else does? Phil's going to take us down? The fans are going to take us down? Ardenas has been doing this for months. Um, I would like to point out, too, when I looked at the video myself, um, <clears throat> every comment that I've seen is pretty much, you know, Fre fuck Fred Fox, shit like that. I have not seen a single negative comment comments even revolving around the fact that Arnos is a piece of shit because well they're, they're gone i don't know any other thoughts on this mr goes dragon i'm sure you're fucking brimming with insight here <laughs> I, I mean we covered a lot of the topics in that discussion but it just it just baffles me that like people immediately jump to the conclusions that they're jumping to and are even with the evidence in front of them there's still like this well you it just could be a sock account. Like uh, the fact that people think somebody's going to put that much work into like an aha gotcha moment. It, we're not that motivated. Plus we were playing destiny. We didn't have the time to fuck with them like that. But uh, no, the, the policing of the comments doesn't surprise me. It disappoints me. But I mean, from the very get go, I've been against the whole monetization of re uploads, even if they are edited or anything like that, because what he was doing, and my big issue with what he was doing, or she, or whatever, is that validates Phil when he says that we're just trying to make money off of him and we're re-uploading his stuff to gain some profit off of his work. And 
when he says that, we don't have a leg to stand on because there's people like Gardnos out there that was doing that. So with the SOK, there came the golden rule that all had to follow. If you made content about DSP, in no way could you monetize it at all. You couldn't accept donations, you couldn't make a Patreon, in no way could you make money off of DSP unless Fred granted you special privileges. You want to go deeper? We can go deeper, Baba. We can go deeper because I'm a dirty e-beggar for even accepting something that someone wants to send me. A dirty fucking e-beggar. I can't even type today. I'm a dirty fucking e-beggar. So if somebody else do it, they a dirty fucking e-beggar too, right? Exactly. Okay, so let's go to Sons of Kojima again. Who else we got here? Man, we have Evil AJ. Evil AJ is like the grandfather of shitting on DSP. Wow, my PayPal. Hmm. Don't even have a hitbox or a Twitch dot. Just my PayPal. That's fucking really odd, isn't it? Wow. Okay. It's something I've been noticed, by the way. Didn't ever say anything about it because I'm that type of person. We scroll down. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker S rank playthrough. Uh, my Twitch stream, my Twitter. Okay. So at least I don't have a donation link in now. So that's something. We can't criticize them for that. My Twitch stream, my Twitter. Oh, look, my PayPal. What the fuck is this? Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater Fox Island Run. My PayPal. Wow. What a dirty fucking e beggar Evil AJ is, right? This dude literally has 16,000 subs. You think he has 16,000 subs because of fucking Metal Gear Solid playthroughs? I'm sure they helped. But I can guarantee you, most of his subs, at least a good bit of them, are because he basically originated this Zygon play. He did originate it. This is how you don't play MGS3, 1.7 million views. Now, you don't have a donation link in this because you're not stupid. Yeah, you don't have a donation link in that. He's not that stupid. But if you say, wow, this Evil AJ guy made some great content, let's go to his page. Oh, a PayPal. Oh, wow, he did a playthrough of MGS3. That's pretty cool. He must be good at the game. Oh, show more. Oh, my PayPal. I'm a dirty e-beggar and I don't even have a direct PayPal link in my description box. Isn't that fucking something? Wow, I wonder why Evil AJ was never called out for that. Isn't that really weird? It's not like Evil AJ is in with the cool kids of the SOK and I'm not. No, no way. No way, they must have just missed it. It's cool, they're gonna call him out now after this. They must have just missed it. Fair enough, I understand. It's some weird high morality flicks he tried to pull and wanted to force other detractors to follow. I believe it was to show people how dedicated they were to being better than Dark Side Phil. Well, I'll go ahead and tell you this right now. It doesn't take a lot to be better than Dark Side Phil. And making money on YouTube doesn't put you in the same spotlight as DSP. That just wouldn't make sense. And the fact that he held on so strongly to this belief and wanted to force other detractors to follow this rule just truly show how fucking seriously he took shitting on a middle aged nigga that's bad at playing video games. But little did Fred know that enforcing this stupid ass rule will come back to bite him in the ass and tarnish the legacy of the SOK. So this whole fiasco began in July 2017. A user by the name of TXT had became a Twitch affiliate and was able to create emotes for his channel. Since he was known to dunk on DSP on Twitter, he figured using a picture of Phil's face would be a pretty fun idea. He was well known in the SOK community, so it didn't take long for word to spread of this new emote. Another follower of Fred that went by the name King of Pole, who could really get his own video based on the shit he's done, attacked TXT on Twitter regarding the emote. Hey, they call me TXT. Nothing against you, and I'm glad you got affiliate, but do you need to monetize DSP's face? Just my opinion. What's well, gonna sub? Another Fred fuckboy that goes by the name of Fizz also publicly called him out on Twitter. The sons of Kojima raise profits for charity. Is that profiting off the detractor community? No. The money was raised for charity, and we had no interactions with the money. TXT is using Phil for his own personal gain. Keep in mind though, the emo never went live. It was just an idea he was playing around with. So these no lies are just bitching over nothing. TXT got into contact with his homie Sir James D. Tick, and the two of them piled up as much info as they could about Fred and his little cult members. TXT finally responded back to King of Paul on Twitter with this fire ass tweet, 
showing how much of a hypocrite he was being at the time. Hey, Cookin' Johnson, nothing against you. Glad you got affiliate, but do you need to profit off DSP drama? Just my opinion, was gonna sub. This sparked a huge spurg out from Pole, and he further attacked TXT with these tweets. Except you fucking faggot Matthew, I do my podcast on all loyal cows. Saturday was angry Joe dickhead, go ask the DSP fans to pay another ticket. Secondly, that person gave me his extra humble bundles after I told him that's okay in DMs. Fucking ask him yourself Matthew, I have one stream of DSP, therefore I'm a DSP money maker. Forgets all of my other poll show stuff 2013 from now. Fuck yourself. Boy oh boy. That shit looks like something a certain gamer we know would do when faced with words he doesn't like. And he shows that he's been blocked by King of Pole. This whole situation resulted in an apology from Pole. And a long ass tweet longer that I'm not gonna bother to read. Sorry for the spurts of drama with They Call Me TXT. I apologize if I came off wrong. I'm just Chris from the Brightside Viking event. Sorry TXT. We cool? So, a legend by the name of Joe Rogue got involved in DM TXT on Twitter. He showed him the conversations him and Fred had regarding the whole drama about the DSP emote, showing Fred's true feeling on the matter. So Joe Rogue, TXT, and Sir James all planned out what to do with this information, and they decided that they were going to leak this conversation slowly, one day at a time so it could stay fresh in people's minds. Nice rhymes, man. On August 3rd, 2017, Joe Rowe released the first leak to Kiwi Farms, and they was just having a field day with that shit. I'll go ahead and read one page of that conversation, just to give you an idea of Fred's behavior off camera. I noticed you blaming the SOK as a whole for the TXT drama. Look man, I don't like how you guys are causing so much drama with this one rule that not everyone agreed to. That's what's caused this whole situation in the first place. Then for Pascal and others to come in and shame TXT, when people like Tevin, Slow Beef, Review Tech USA, and others make money off of DSP. TXT has every right to do its own thing, so does anyone else. This whole thing is being taken way too seriously when we are just laughing at a 35 year old loser. Yeah, you could say like, I disagree with what he's doing, and that's fine. But this rule came from you guys, and it caused a stigma with anyone who decides to make money off a of field, and there is no need for that. What do you mean, you guys? Pascal is the only person from the SOK that said anything. I didn't say you guys, I said Pascal and others, as in random SOK fans or whoever. TXT is the one crying foul about the community, and making a big deal quoting and everyone and crying. He made it about the SOK. There is no rule. Popular opinion is not a rule. People want to make this sound like TXT is fighting the establishment. It's just a handful of people who think he's a hypocrite and called him out. There's others that disagree. Everyone is part of the anti-DSP community. So if there are different opinions, how is it a rule? Let me also point out Slow Beef created the Let's Play genre. He is not the same as someone who literally just tweeted about Phil for three years. Slow Beef made his own way. Phil is not even 1% of what he does. So. Slowly but surely, the detractor community was turning against the SOK. While Fred was still in hot and waiting for shit to blow over, King of Pole got into contact with Sir James. James convinced King of Pole to make a video telling people about how Fred egged him on to go after TXT for the emote and wanted to fly over to Vidar Viking to physically harm him and record it on his phone. For the people listening to this right now, I'm assuming you're going to be listening to what I have to say on my way of going out the door and what I mean by that. Um, it took me a hard time to kind of come around with this and a lot of talking and discussing with friends and people and how I would do this, whether it be a twit longer, whether it be um, a video or not. And I just didn't feel comfortable with any of that, whether it was public or not, um, due to the fact that I still feel like I'm friends with these people even though I feel like I've been used by the people at the same time. Um, or at least one of them in particular. Uh, before we start, I do want to clarify that me and TXT are on good terms. Uh, we're not just neutral, we are on good terms. I have sincerely apologized to him multiple times, and we have talked on a few occasions and are now a part of a Skype group and discussing things along the way as more information comes out and I do want to apologize to Kiwi Farms uh, and a couple of these other communities who have kind of um, posted a lot of different information and things like that that uh, contradict a lot of the things that I was thinking and it made me go back and look at my timeline of things 
and conversations that I was having as well as discussing things with other people in the same uh, calls and same conversations to get their perspective of it uh, to make sure that I wasn't misconstrued or confused as to what I was hearing or if it wasn't just my mind playing tricks on me. Um, so let's go back. So you obviously know about me and TXT if you guys have been paying attention. It's very obvious what happened between me and TXT. I'm not going to get into details with that. What I'm going to get into details with is why I made that tweet. Um, my thoughts are my own and my opinions are my own. And I really, and the day that it was coming on, I posted a, a screen cap on a Discord channel that's dedicated for the fans of the Sons of Kojima. Um, and it had, was a screen cap of me trying to subscribe to TXT on his new Twitch account that had an affiliate and seeing that it had Phil's face. I didn't feel comfortable uh, subscribing to it due to the fact that I did not want to see um, TXT go through any litigations or problems with Phil, and I felt like he should know about it. At the same time, I was in a group conversation and a, and a voice call with a couple people from the SOK, particularly Fred Fox and a few other people not in the SOK. And uh, during the process of going through that information, he had suggested to me very adamantly that I should vocally let him know how I feel and make, um, make show him what why that's wrong because monetization is wrong and so forth. Now, me and Fred have tossed back ideas back and forth on monetization and my thoughts and my men I've always come to the conclusion that I feel like I'm defending myself when I'm talking to him due to the fact that he is very much against monetization of anything related to DSP and that's fine and I you know that's okay that's completely fine whereas in I'm against monetization of anybody's face uh, in general or anybody's brands like using other people's brands and as we all know Dark Side Phil's face is literally his brand and he sells it on t-shirts and mugs I did not feel comfortable giving a subscriber uh, a free subscription from Twitch Prime to TXT at the time due to the fact that I didn't feel like supporting Phil's brand, nor did I feel like he should show use Phil's brand to make money. He's better than that, in my opinion. Just when you think it couldn't get bad enough, another member came through and released a huge amount of leaks regarding Fred and others' conversations about detractors in the community. And for a bunch of fucking nerds, they sure had a lot to say about other people. Further leaks showed that Fred's initial plan was turning King of Pole against TXT, and the host of two would end up taking each other out. During the beginning of the whole emo fiasco, Fred wanted to get rid of both you and Pole. Basically, he thought you two would go after each other's throats and disappear because of the drama. On September 6, 2017, a former member named Renegade Operative made a video responding to all the leaks that were coming out about Fred and the SOK. I'll link it down in the description below if you want to find out more. A day later, Fred put out a tweet longer apologizing for his actions, although many people saw right through the bullshit he was trying to pull. Let's get this nice and center. Freddy boy, and this is how you don't play. Damage control, pussy boy, tweet longer. Let's see what he says. Oh yeah, it's another meme. And it's in this tweet longer. Another one of the memes, I apologize to everyone that may have been affected. Motherfucker. If you can go back and find this shit, and if you've seen these fucking, these fucking chat leaks and shit, you can think about who you affected. You can fucking name people you affected. You went through all of that time, and this is definitely towards fucking Fred. You went through all that time being autistic as fucking extra, extra petty to spy on people, talk about people behind their back, look people information up, try to find dirt on people. But you can't name people when you want to apologize? Are you kidding me? Okay. These are the same people that made a, like a fucking hour long video on Divas, by the way. I bet you Divas is laughing right now. If you don't know who Divas is, that's way, that's some deep ass lore. That's like fucking three years ago. The things I've said and I've done and done in the past were disgusting, embarrassing, and inexcusable. I'm not going to make excuses or say that anyone else influenced me to do them. That's a sneak diss towards King Capole because King Capole was saying that Fred influenced him to act like, to act like a complete, complete jackass about the uh, Vidal Viking situation, which made it snowball into being way more than it should have been. I take full responsibility for what I did and what went on in the group at that time. I realized in mid-2016 that public drama was defining who I was in this community, and I wanted to stop fueling it. From then on out on social media. We really gonna go back for this. This is some deep lore shit. And uh, the Kiwi forums talk about this too. Ardenas 
If you don't know who Ardenas is, Ardenas was a person that uploaded videos about DSP. It would be clips from pre-stream and shit. Had very minimal editing. editing. Of course, the artistic Illuminati keeping tracks on you if you're getting reasonable views doing DSP videos. And if you're not a member of the SOK, obviously. Come on. So they, they keep some tracks on Ardenas. Ardenas has ads on the videos, apparently. Even if they did, they probably made like $4 or some shit a year. But I don't fucking know. But let's let's be okay, let's just say they had ads on the videos. If they didn't, they didn't. If they did, they did. The shit is so fucking old now. But the way they acted is insane. So they talked about it on the podcast. And of course everybody had the hive mind. Oh my god, that's despicable. Oh, they're just as bad as Phil. They prove Phil right. Blah 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 blah. Same old shit. So they start the narrative on that this Audnas channel is terrible. And they're using, they're using Phil for money. And it's horrible. You don't want to like them. Now, they don't say that. But if I make a video just like this, it's some people that, it's some people that just see something and that's the way they think. And I've been saying for a long ass time, you can go way back and see this. I said before, if you feel a certain way about me, you can feel that way. I'm not going to try to change your mind. If you think I'm a piece of shit, then I'm a piece of All shit right. to you. And this is the September, uh, September 7th. This is, this is fucking pussy ass too longer that he waited a week to fucking upload let's go over the replies just like when i do a dsp video and i read the replies good on you i have some shitty things i'm embarrassed about too but we can all own it and move on you a moron Theo. sorry except that he's not and still lying saying he's not happening it's not happening but it is i'm just taking it at face value do you take dsp stuff at face value as far as i know you upload whole videos specifically calling out specific dsp stuff you obviously don't take that at face value. As a solid fan of apology and moving forward, lessons learned and leaving the rest in your past is best. You can't please everyone. You can't please everyone. Okay, so every time DSP apologizes, I'm gonna fucking thank him and say he did a great job and he can move on from it, right? If I do that, I'm a DSP fanboy. And it's terrible, a terrible thing to do that. It's a terrible thing to accept his apology. And this fucking cut uploads this bullshit blanket apology and it's cool oh good job Fred well we forgive you bro are you kidding me are you fucking kidding me okay let me find some real dumb shit to do and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say I'm sorry if you got mad it's cool we can just say we're sorry if you got mad and it's cool on the same day another former member by the name of Che released a video about the Kojima leaks as well and in that video, he showed us that the SOK planned out the copyright strikes of Phil's channel done by B. Awesome One. Yes, the same B. Awesome One that gave us this legendary clip. You better take a sip. You fucking sleazy asshole. So it was partly the SOK's fault that Phil was able to gather B. Awesome One's information. B. Awesome One is a duff for letting them talk him into doing that fuck shit anyway. As much as we all dislike DSP, the main rule about this shit is to not get personally involved. Because when you do, Dumb shit like this could happen. He's not oh, gonna by tell the us. way, I have your IP, I have your name, and I have your address. Are you? Now I want to get into a leak that I personally think is the worst. There was a female member in the group named Alice. She wasn't very healthy. In fact, she was battling with cancer. But sadly, she didn't make it. She was a part of the podcast for a very long time, and the way Fred and some of his members talked about her is absolutely sickening. Just like DSP, Fred doesn't have an understanding of what friendship is. He just wanted to use people. I just don't maybe Alice, Alice kind of pisses me off now. Oh, dude, oh, trust me, Alice pisses everyone off. Like, I was once her friend, and now I'm not no longer her friend. Because all of a sudden, all, all of a sudden, here's how it started, because I had no quarrel with her. And then, then all of a sudden, you know how, remember the, um, Dusty talking about bringing characters into, um, uh, the SO, his SOK game? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember that I, vo I voted against her, and she's like, oh, look at my friend Levy voting against me. Got really butter over nothing. Yeah? Mitch, get off the period. Hey, no, no, that's one of the reasons why Chaos hates her, is because... He, he immediately, like, saw that she was talking shit about me behind my back in the chat. Yeah. 
That's why I don't like her either. Hey, I mean, you can't get much worse than having a freaking co-worker from your work die. Oh, it couldn't get worse than your fucking parents actually tell you that you're the worst thing to ever happen to them. Oh, it shit. It couldn't oh. be worse than your best friend dying from uh, an overdose. Damn. Damn. Damn Friend, here, 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 here's the thing about best friends. You can find new ones. Not trying to be a dick here, but you can find new ones. Sure. Of course. It's, Sure, it's, gonna, it's, it's sure, hard. Sure, sure, it's gonna it's gonna be hard because you've known that person for a time, for a long, long time. But in a sense of you're looking at people, they're expendable. People nowadays are expendable. I heard some stories that Fred tried to dox her after finding out about her death because he thought she was lying in order to backstab him, which is insanely fucked up. He also doxed her parents as well for no reason whatsoever. Fred was always a paranoid fuck. He couldn't even trust his own members, like Moogle. Who he thought was lying about moving because the door made a certain creaking sound. His internet issues are the same he had at his house. His mom came to visit him and brought his sister, but he didn't move. I remember hearing that exact same door sound when his grandparent came in his room. Three days later, Fizz deleted his Twitter account since no one was buying his bullshit apology. There was no way Fred could possibly recover from this, and he knew it. Here's a conversation he had with Pascal as the leaks went down. I see it's okay is taking a beating on Twitter because of the TXT stuff. Awesome stuff. Really great. We're now seeing us back in Brian and the cult. Kiwi Farms is great too. All of this philosophical talk adds up to nothing. We are getting our asses kicked on Twitter and Kiwi Farms submitting us as targets to get attacked and doxxed by organized trolls. If it wasn't for Pascal tossing softballs to TXT, getting demolished with the it's okay flag waving in his Twitter handle, we'd be fine. But none of this matters to Pascal. He's a part-timer who only takes and gives nothing back. Who cares to go after Pascal? He should have stayed and see himself and just became a hundred follower meme shit poster like he was supposed to. Yes, I fucked up and made a massive mistake. There will be repercussions and I accept that completely. Like what? What can we do to you? Well, I don't know how this is gonna be fixed. We just eat shit sandwich and move on like always. But now we're fucked on Kiwi. This is probably the worst hit to our reputation we've ever taken, and the worst position we've ever been in with those that can harm us. So yeah, I'm thrilled. He shows a DM message from Joro. Thanks, Pascal. Look, Fred, I already feel bad enough about this. Saying smug shit like thanks, Pascal isn't gonna help anybody. I get it. I fucked up. It's not smug. I'm disgusted with you. You never do fucking anything but take from the group and give us bullshit. You have no idea how much you fucking fucked us, you moron. In the end, the leaks proved that Fred was nothing more than a paranoid loser who stalks and doxes other people for absolutely no reason at all. The fact that you can come out of this mess looking worse than DSP is mind boggling. Speaking of DSP, it didn't take long for him to catch word of the shit that was going down. He sent out a tweet longer to pretty much dance on the grave of the SOK. My thoughts on the SOK situation. And my only ones, so please. Stop asking me for more. Tons of people are now messaging me to say that SOK is being exposed for doing horrible things to me that they denied for years and the like via a series of leaks. It was obvious the vast majority of the shit was always them, as they are the only group who delved that deep into my personal shit. I would not be surprised if they performed the vast majority of negative things against me including the doxing, DDoS attacks, false copyright strikes, prank calls, pizza deliveries, signing up my emails to hundreds of spam email sites, signing up my physical mail to dozens of catalogs and magazines I don't want, sending me feces in the mail, yes, all of that happened, and even swatting me. And remember, Liana's father also got swatted after the swat against us didn't get any of the negative desired effect nor the real ability to make fun of us. That's the most fucked up thing about SOK and the like, the way they don't only try to ruin my life, but the lives of everyone around me as well. I wholeheartedly admit that money was one, of many, factors in the breakdown of my relationship with Liana, and what caused the money situation. Two things, one. My accumulating huge debt from a move across the USA, and two. My inability to pay off that debt because of false copyright strikes single-handedly destroying DSP Gaming as a profitable YouTube channel. Now that it's come out that they were directly involved with the false copyright strikes, I can 100% accurately say that SOK has, 
in many ways, destroyed my reputation, my capacity to keep making money on YouTube, and my personal life as well. I will now reveal something that I have never revealed before, and it's something the SOK have dwelled on for years and totally spun for their own purposes. This will blow your mind, the real reason that we did not attend Liana's brother's wedding. After Liana's father was swatted despite us never mentioning him in any video nor giving out info regarding him, we knew nobody was safe. None of our family members would ever be immune from the hatred and vile actions that we were suffering, because the people doing them had no moral compass nor conscience. So when it came time to start making preparations to attend Liana's brother's wedding in late 2015, we talked directly with him and his wife to be about it. We came to the conclusion that, ultimately, if we attended there would be a strongly increased chance that someone would try to fuck with us and ruin the event. Which obviously we did not want to happen because it wasn't our event to get ruined. That would have been incredibly fucked up, having someone else's once in a lifetime event get ruined by a swatting or another kind of harmless prank that these fuckwads would try to pull. So after having serious discussions about it, we all collectively agreed to stay home and not attend the event. I stopped mentioning it altogether and Liana and her brother were both very sad, but knew it was for the best. What did the SOK do? Well first, they decided to find out the address and date of the wedding. Yes, that is entirely true, they're so fucking sick that they, on their own and without my mentioning it for months, researched and found the event, and then spread that info all over the internet. They then decided to spin it that the reason we weren't attending was because I had forced Liana to skip IT so that I could stay home and play Fallout 4, to make money. They actually accused me of keeping her at home forcefully. It couldn't have been further from the truth, it was the crippling fear that the SOK themselves, who found the damn date and address of the wedding, would have swatted the wedding, that made us stay home. So not only were they the reason we missed the wedding, they then turned their own vile actions into a way to make me look bad after the fact, it's mind-numbing, isn't it? The best part? I don't even know any of them, nor do I even know who the hell they are outside of the fact that they all want to hurt me. It's absolute insanity. That's how that group is, just like anyone is who is hyper-focused on hurting one person you don't even know. It's stereotypical stalker behavior and when it happens to celebrities, they get restraining orders. Sadly, I never had a defense against this kind of stuff, because I wasn't big enough, smart enough, or rich enough to find a way to put protections in place and slash or just be immune to it. This is a textbook case of a bunch of sick-headed, mentally ill, yes, if you try to ruin someone's life who you don't know, you are mentally ill, individuals trying to destroy someone they've never met and have zero personal relationship with. It's disgusting and disturbing. There's a line between laughing at someone's shortcomings, and trying to destroy their life and the lives of their family. And it's not a fine line. For those who are finally seeing the light, they need to look back over the last several years, all the shit they did to me since I moved to Washington, and seriously see if they can live with themselves. I feel bad even when I inadvertently hurt someone, but these people deliberately tried to destroy me for literally nothing. No logical reason. That's wrong on so many levels. Anyway, outside of the fact that it's been exposed that the SOK were directly involved with the false copyright strikes against DSP Gaming and more, I'm not reading up on any of the drama shit, and I honestly don't care. My life is already destroyed in a lot of ways, both financially and personally, and I'll probably never recover from the financial situation I'm in, that they created. Therefore, why dwell on it? I've got a good thing going with Twitch and I'm going to focus on the positives instead of the crazy amount of negatives I've suffered at their hands. So please, don't keep contacting me with juicy new info as I don't care. Just let me do my daily thing and be who I've always been since day one, and let's keep stuff positive moving forward. Everything else is just white noise that we can block out. On September 9th, it marked the official end of the SOK. 
Loophole 572 made one final podcast and was joined by other detractors and former members of the SOK to address Fred and all of the bullshit that went down in the past few days. The link to that will be in the description. And so entered the legacy of the SOK. A group that was so full of themselves and was led by a fucking coward who had no grasp of morality. A group of people who took laughing at a middle aged nigga who scams his handicapped fans way too seriously. Fred wanted to put out this image of being a cool funny guy who would be regarded as the best troll in the DSP community. But really, he was just a fucking bitch who got his feelings hurt whenever you criticize him on something. The fact he made monetizing DSP such a big deal is honestly insane. Who cares about profiting off of what you do? It's YouTube. These videos are made for your entertainment. If people want to react to my content or use some of the things I say in videos, then by all means, go ahead. All of this is supposed to be fun at the end of the day. None of it should be taken seriously. Who the fuck cares if you profit from it? It doesn't make you a better person in any kind of way if you don't. Hell, I remember there was this one guy in my comment section who said I was just as bad as DSP for having a Patreon. I'm just thankful that people actually take the time out of their day to watch my videos and show support to my channel. I guess the main reason I wanted to make this video was to showcase that not all detractors should be viewed as righteous just because they shit on DSP. Making fun of DSP doesn't make you a better person and you shouldn't think so highly of yourself for doing so. Like I said previously, all of this should be done just for the entertainment of others. Yes, DSP is a horrible person, but there are worse people out there. And as the SOK showed, you could be a detractor, but you can still be worse than Dark Side Phil. The SOK story is a blemish on the detractor community, but it's a story that needed to be told as an example of what not to do when it comes to trolling DSP. Because if you really start taking this shit to heart, then you can come out looking even worse than the pig boy himself. And that's a fate that I doubt anyone would want to live with. Okay, let's see. Jim, please give a shout out to Alice. Uh, hello, Alice. We're doing, we're doing drive time AM radio now, I guess. Uh, hello, Alice. I hope you have a nice day.